Well, um, good afternoon, and uh, we're almost at the end of two long days. I hope we could. Uh, I hope you had good, rich, informative days these two days, and I hope we, we could share with you um, uh, or lift the curtain a little bit on different different aspects, on different parts, different geographies, different different uh, initiatives um, of Nestle. Um, that we could also answer your questions. Uh, a lot is happening. Uh, I hope we could convey that to you too. There is quite a lot of uh, things happening at Nestle, and but that is what Nestle is all about. Uh, Nestle is many, many moving parts in many, many places in the world that, that are coming together uh, um, and driving corporate performance uh, behind a, a shared, a, a shared, explicit common purpose. And and. Uh, it's all about people too, and I hope we could convey some of the people. Uh, it's uh, uh, companies are people, and people are drivers, uh, 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 drivers with experience, with knowledge of what they're talking about. And um, I mentioned uh, uh, yesterday morning uh, that I actually want you to feel Nestle and uh, what's happening here. Um, one thing before I, 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 I start here, I, we didn't talk about the roadmap. You may remember, um, uh, I spoke always about the roadmap, and and I can just tell you, uh, the roadmap is still valid. It's still, it's still this 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 framing. Uh, it's giving us the strategic direction uh, that creates this alignment, uh, as we are decentralized and have many parts. It creates this alignment. This is the glue that defines what we want to be as a company. It defines also what we want to leverage or competitive advantages that we have to permanently fuel. It defines also where we want to play or grow uh, uh, um, areas. Uh, it also defines how we want to do that efficiently and effectively, the operational pillars that we do have quite for a while. And innovation is so much part of that. And it is also defining the roadmap how we want to do that responsibly. And that is based on our culture. Or, 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 or principles that uh, everybody lives up to in, in our company. And th these are dimensions that we speak quite a lot internally about so that we maintain that glue. Uh, the roadmap is also the base on which we define how we want to be part of society, creating shared value, and I'm going to say a few words uh, afterwards. Uh, we have also shared with you six priorities. They're still valid, and, and we have covered quite a bit of them, uh, uh, quite a bit of uh, these um, uh, uh, principles uh, or, or priorities. Uh, digital is there, uh, people, uh, stakeholders, also making choices, portfolio management and all is linked to that, and all three focus areas. The focus of the, uh, the two days was, and I mentioned that, it was about engine. It was about the engine. The engine, the engine for growth. Also, the engine of returns, uh, how are we going to go uh, about profitable growth. And indeed, our success as a company is going to be so intimately linked with growth, um, um, mostly or organic growth, uh, growing what we have, growing where we are, uh, are engaged. In. And, and growth is linked with capability to keep relevance. It is, uh, uh, it's so important in an extremely fast-moving world to keep the relevance, to keep connected with uh, what the consumers are expecting. And the world is many, many challenges, giving many challenges, but so many opportunities. And, and we have to uh, stay very, very self-critical. Um, uh, we have to work with agility, with, with, uh, with flexibility, creativity, and discipline. Um, and, and also, uh, that induced this permanent innovation. Our success, uh, uh, growth, in other words, is so intimately linked also with that permanent innovation. And that is actually what we have done now for 150 years. Um, if something uh, characterizes uh, our company, it's this permanent innovation drive, renovation and innovation drive. Uh, and it is big and small. We have these nice examples we are so proud of, of big innovations that are really have changed the, the game in, in certain areas, in certain categories. But, and I hope we could convey t during the innovation tour yesterday, so much of our success is also linked with so many small innovations that are actually going in the right direction of nutrition, health, and wellness. But the many, many small innovations, thousands of products every year reformulated on uh, different axes. I hope we could share that with you yesterday. Uh, success is also going to be linked uh, with, with driving, and I have mentioned it, the relevance. Be relevant. Re be relevant of what uh, consumers expect and, and driving added value, margin enhancing relevance. And that relevance is linked with answering 
It is linked with anticipating and it is uh, linked with engaging. Uh, engaging the many opportunities and challenges uh, of the challenging environment. It is driving the relevance in answering first the different dynamics of what's happening in society, the different dynamics of geographies and do that adapted to that geography. It is linked with answering the different expectations of consumers, be it the millenniums or aging population or emerging consumer. It is also answering the societal expectations of what health is and that is redefining itself permanently, uh, uh, especially in the food and beverage industry. It is also driving relevance in anticipating, anticipating new ways of doing business. E-commerce, we showed part of that, but also different business models, new ways of connecting with consumers um, and, and, and their expectations. Increased, anticipating the increased competitive intensity. And we have shared that also when we spoke about coffee, for example, we are really totally very much aware of monitoring uh, what's happening out there and reactive or actually preempting as much as possible. Local competition is something that we really have to take very much into account too. The players that are out there, the competitive landscape gets new names and are going to be very relevant to what we do. Anticipating also new technologies and, and be there in the, in the front line, R&D, and, and uh, to give solutions to many of these challenges we face. And by doing that, also creating value again and to create differentiation versus competition. And I think it's going to be increasingly science and knowledge driven uh, if we want to go about this nutrition, health and wellness uh, uh, um, uh, purpose. It's also driving relevance through uh, engaging. You can anticipate, but then you have to engage. Engaging in this, call it fourth industrial revolution. And, and actually it has been said before, actually the whole NBE, the processes, end-to-end -end processes, how we want to go about that, is actually a precondition for success in the fourth industrial revolution. Um, it is also engaging in, in investing in research. And, and we are investing quite heavily in research, increasingly. Because as I mentioned before, it's going to be a differentiator. It's going to be such an important part of our success in the future. And, and do that through platforms. Uh, and, and engaging also in new platforms. Nestle Health Science, Skin Health is, is, is part of that. These are upfront engagements uh, that, that we put resources behind that are going to deliver uh, valuable, um, profitable growth in the future. Engaging in partnerships, these are new ways of going about the complexity of the world. Also in our R&D, we're increasingly setting up partnerships and relationships and networks with the right players. Now, to be able to do that, you need resources. And there you have this whole thing about the resource allocation. Return on resources is a fundamental concept. A return on invested capital is one of them, but a return on resources is something that we want to leverage as being one of the drivers of decision making in this company putting the right resources behind the right things, which is basically not putting them behind the wrong things, which is the war on waste. And we have been uh, talking about uh, hands working capital is one of them and going after the money locked into working capital. It is portfolio management is all driven on these criteria, how we allocate our resources behind the right things, invest more where it works, fix or disinvest. And we have been disinvesting or disengaging from more than two billion equivalent sales in the last two years. Hence also efficient resource allocation in operationally and structurally, the, um, uh, structural dimensions. We challenge ourselves there and think we have to challenge ourselves more. NCE, Nestle Continuous Excellence, uh, not new, it's part of our DNA, it touches every part of our business. It's basically specifically operational, going after waste. Zero waste, we go for zero. And that is lean the Nestle way. It has been driving 1.5 billion savings every year, and that's going to continue because also a social structure like Nestle, like every social structure, has a trend through what they call societal entropy. So you have always to maintain that going uh, uh, after, uh, after waste. NBE was uh, that other, uh, that is more structural resource allocation, this backline frontline, this, this efficient, effective, lean backline that we're building up. Um, and then that allows them to have a sharp, fast, agile frontline. And that is through simplification, simplifying, standardizing and sharing. This is actually a logical continuation of, of, of this globe initiative that we had in the past. We have combined now NCE our Nestle Continuous Excellence, together with our shared services that we had, together with Globe. And that's a powerful setup uh, that allows us to really scale up. We felt too much that Nestle has size, but do we really bring it to scale and to competitive advantage? 
that should be uh, uh, the base of unlocking quite a lot of resources that we call then fuel for growth. All these actions, all these initiatives that we have shared with you is part of unlocking these resources that we want to put behind our more brand support or brand uh, uh, through R&D, through innovation renovation that is increasingly important, uh, even more, through marketing support. The second level is capacity to compete, a resource for that too, and then also the resources for higher returns. Now, we speak about profitable growth, uh, and uh, we speak also about profitable growth sustainably. And this is this uh, fiddle align, this balancing act between short term and long term. And uh, we're living in a world where short term is like more valuable than long term, but we have to maintain this balance. We are a long term inspired company but we do have short-term intensity. And that is decision, that is management, that is decision-making and framing. And this is what we do. We are investing now heavily for certain things that's gonna happen in four or five years time. We do that because somebody else did that for us a few years ago. This balancing act is something that is, is, is always under pressure, always pushing to the short term. And you know about that more than I know, but. We are a long-term inspired company, but we do have short-term intensity. When we speak about long-term, we speak about trust. Trust in the broader context, because our success is based on trust. It is trust of consumers, customers, trust of investors, shareholders, trust of stakeholders. That's the obvious trust. But it is also uh, linked with what we do. Uh, first of all, product and service, quality, reliability, sustain and, uh, consistency, that's what we do. But also how we do it. And Nestle, in that sense, assumes how we assume our responsibility in the context of society and how we contribute to healthier, sustainable, inclusive society. And in the world of today, we have to be very explicit on these things. This is something that is really, uh, uh, I would say, tangible and it's part of our success too. Um, we, we call that uh, creating shared value. We just linked with how do you combine growing your business and at the same time also creating value for society. We truly believe and I think we have our university of 150 years. It's 150 years that we have been creating shared value. We have framed it as such now in these three words, but it is the fundamental way we have been going about our business for a long time, always. And it is the healthy way of connecting with society. We have been communicating about this. We're focusing on three areas, nutrition, uh, uh, water, and rural development, because that's where we most intersect with society and where we can add value. Um, we report, uh, we have a report now for the third time, we report on our commitments on these levels, and they are linked with, we send them out when we send the annual report out, so you can read about them too. But it's, it, it, it is something that we didn't talk too much about, but it's something that is omnipresent. 340,000 people in this company are living up to these principles of all what we do, and there's no contradiction should bring us to be successful and operational uh, results and, and the success for this company, at the same time should create value uh, for society at large and, and it is not contradictionary. Well, that brings me then to an end though, but oh yeah, before I forget, we didn't speak about the Nestle model. It's all on your mind. <coughs> Nestle model, what is it? It's top line, bottom line, capital efficiency, first half hour in business school. That is what defines a success of a company over time. Top line, bottom line, capital efficiency, and it is actually all about cash flow at the end of the day. Um, it gets a little bit messy when we speak about five to six percent. That's where it gets messy. And uh, why? Because we mix up ambition with targets, I would say. I, 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 we don't back off from our ambition of five to six percent. If you have walked through the sixth floor, if you see what's up in, in, in society, if you see uh, uh, the potential value creation that we are working on, where we're investing in, et cetera. That's more or less a line that we over mid-term, long-term have to walk. But we are realistic. And when you have situations like the few years we're living in, no pricing and you can go on, well, then we're realistic too. The five to six percent is our ambition and we keep that going. Top line, bottom line, capital efficiency consistently. Brings me to the end. I hope I, uh, with that we could convey uh, uh, our confidence in, in the future. The confidence in our future. 
uh, also in the confidence of building the right uh, resources and the right initiatives to be successful in that future. It is based upon our passion for nutrition, something we, we celebrate this year for 150 years, but basically we celebrate that as a base for the next 150 years. Um, and that is with the purpose of enhancing lives uh, and contributing to a healthier future for all. Healthy future is also our common shared financial future. So thank you very much. And I think we now have some time for question and answers. Looking forward for your questions.